What's going on? Well, I finally have my stuff here in Austin. It was a complete nightmare. The whole process. I ended up going with a company and I don't even want to give their name because I just I'm so annoyed and pissed at the whole situation. And the reason I went with them in the first place was because of the price, the timeline to get my stuff. Well, the price nearly doubled because every time the people showed up, there'd be some sort of issue. There'd be additional fees that just continually added up. Then on the day that I was supposed to get my stuff, I got a call saying, hey, it's actually going to be three more days before we can even give you a scheduled delivery date. Oh, and, you know, I, I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to complain how awful the whole process was, how I think they lied to me, how... I am just so pissed about how much extra money was spent, but they they just have you by the balls because they have your stuff. And it's like, hey, if you don't pay this, then you're not going to get your stuff. I'm not going to complain about that. I'm just not. So anyway, we're in this new area of my house, which is the guest bedroom that I'm turning into some sort of YouTube slash podcast area, just a dedicated area. I want to set up a different thing for the podcast because this desk is pretty much my review desk. If you see my reviews, there's going to be a top-down camera that I use here, and it just gets too cluttered with the microphone equipment plus all the different camera equipment that I use for my reviews. So I'm wanting to get some sort of table in, just dress up the background. I have people reaching out saying, hey, how about making a little interesting little area rather than just, you know, boring. And I get it because when I watch videos, I want some of the same stuff. So I'm going to be working on that in this dedicated area, something I really didn't have in my other area because I have a separate office area for where I work and do my day job. So that's less stuff and more freedom of doing whatever I want in this room. So that's coming up. A lot of great reviews coming up. I got the Nerve running, the smart trainer. I got to say, I am, first of all, Nerve reached out to me and they asked me, hey, will you do like this hashtag ad? You know, there'll be some compensation, but here's your talking points. I posted this on my Instagram and said, hey, I'm I'm just not going to do it. I reached back out to them and I said, no, absolutely not. As much as I want your device because it is on my very short list of things I want to review as I start training for a marathon and up more of my running. I just says as much it would be it would be great to receive that product for free and to test it out. I gotta say no. I don't want anyone to have any sort of influence in any of the reviews. And you know, that's final. So they said, okay, totally understandable, appreciate your time, Um, very respectful exchange, and they totally understood where I was coming from. To my surprise, they actually came back a couple days later and said, you know what, that's fine, we've watched your reviews, we totally understand where you're coming from, and we'll move forward. So that was when I was still in Fort Lauderdale, living in South Florida, and they said, we'll send it to you, and I said, hey, I'm moving to Austin. Oh, well, we have people in Austin. I'm not kidding you. Sherry, who actually shows up when you get your device um, on a video and tells you kind of like the introductory stuff, she rode her bike from her house to my doorstep to hand me the product, was so friendly, can't say enough nice things about her, and sat there, and st- uh, stood there and talked to me for about 10, 15 minutes about the product, about Austin, a lot of great places. Actually said to reach out to her if I ever want to go cycling and stuff, which I might. Um, And just right there, you know, you got people that work for a company and love the company. And you just know that it's reflected in the quality of the product because I've experienced a lot of things working for different companies. I've experienced the good and the bad. And when someone is super excited about the product and are willing in their off hours to ride their bicycle to someone's house to get them the product to review they've got a lot of faith in it tested a couple times so far and i love it it just talks about pretty shows you your pronate but it'll be part of the review that it's actually going to be my next video so i'm super excited about that just a little update another thing i want to start doing in these podcasts is kind of go through my whoop stats of the previous week for a couple reasons one Maybe it motivates you in some sort of way, seeing um, what I'm doing 
that I can talk through showing what changes I'm making based on my data. Maybe it helps you because it's a good comparison to what you're doing. And lastly, it keeps me accountable. When I look at my stats, whether it's my recovery, my strain, caloric expenditure, whatever it is that the whoop tracks, talking about it on a weekly basis keeps me accountable to myself. It forces me to actually sit down, review the data, and that is going to be something that I want to discuss. Also, in the future, as the channel grows and there's more, I don't want to say disposable income, but more dedicated income, I want to give back to the community. I have a lot of people reaching out that like watching my Whoop reviews and my Whoop videos, but can't afford the monthly subscription. And I totally understand that aspect of it. It's a complete headache for me. I, I hate monthly subscriptions. I've said it time and time again. It's my number one uh, real pet peeve with the whole platform. I understand from Whoop, their recurring revenue um, side of things, the fact that it's a cloud-based server sided interaction with all the data and that's pretty much what you're paying for you're paying for the access and all that but it doesn't you know fact of the matter is it's, it's annoying and it's just a perpetual fee like it's it's never going to end the only people that don't pay a monthly subscription are those who bought the initial whoop versions where they're grandfathered in and they paid one fee and that was that and i've talked about the good the bad with that whole thing but anyway I want to see, I actually should have done this ahead of time, so I apologize. Um, you get a weekly report with Whoop. Again, if you haven't joined the platform, go ahead and I would appreciate if you used my link in the description of here to get $30 off of any membership. It supports the channel and also gets you the Whoop strap, which I will preach until something screws up or something comes around that's better. I don't know what could be better, but it is what it is. So I'm going to pull up, and apologies if you're listening to this. I'll do my best to explain what I'm looking at. Whoop, as of recent, like it may have been a, a few months now, that they started not only giving the monthly performance assessments, which I did in a prior podcast to review, but they also give you weeklies. So you can see um, in relation to my recovery, which your recovery is going to be your sleep quality, your previous day strain, your HRV, and a number of different factors to give you that recovery score to tell much how much your body is ready to handle some sort of cardiovascular strain load for that day. You can see that my strain has been upped. Um, if, if, I, if I look at my, let's see if it's on here actually. Okay, so there's my sleep consistency. Mainly what I'm looking for is I wanted up my strain. What I didn't like of my last monthly performance assessment was that my strain was down unbeknownst to myself. And I was just all out of whack with the rhythm of things, going through the move, um, coming back from road trips, vacations and whatnot. And it just throws you out. Since then, I've joined the gym. I am burning. If I, if I look at my whoop data... On my phone, pull this up. My average caloric expenditure, again, not entirely accurate, but it's a consistent measurement if you're basing it off of prior data, has been up to about 2,900 calories a day as opposed to 2,200 calories a month ago. My average strain is over 14, whereas a couple weeks ago, a month ago, it was hovering around 10. And if I go back, there's been some weeks where it's actually sub 10. I like to keep it in the teens for myself. But again, that's all based on the recovery and how my body's feeling. And I've been staying pretty much in the green with my recovery. And I think, I mean, if you can kind of see that, the green bars um, all across except for one yellow day. I think... My green recovery, and I felt good, and I pushed myself in the gym, has been a result of better mental health. Journaling has been a great addition. I use the Mind Journal. That's something I'm going to try to review in the future, um, but it's three months, and I, I just want to really give it a go. And a new environment, 
being in a city that I actually want to be in. I've never felt more at home of any city that I've moved to. I try to remember how I felt when I first moved to South Florida and it's beautiful. It's different than the Midwest. So you see the palm trees, you're close to the ocean. So you get kind of that, you're, you're shocked, I guess it's just a different environment, but coming to Austin, coming to Texas, I went and got a pair of Tacova boots that I just absolutely loved. I've always wanted some. So I went and just pulled the trigger and got the pair that I've been looking at. Just feel at home. I love country music. I love being outdoors. Uh, this property that I'm on is very, very woodsy. If you've seen my Instagram stories, I've kind of shown around the property a bit. So I just feel good. And it's reflected in the data. I just day to day, mentally, can't wait to get up in the morning, attack the day, and explore Austin. So this is going to be a good addition, I think, on the weekly, just to make sure hold myself accountable. And I would love... To, I need to start a whoop group is what I really need to do in here. I want to work on giving back to the viewers and I want to just review and hold each other accountable because that's one of the good things like when I do CrossFit, one of the good things is you make friends at the CrossFit gym and if you're not showing up, you text them and be like, hey, where you been? You know, And you just hold each other accountable and it just I think it just improves everyone's health both physically and mentally. All right. Main focus of this episode of the podcast is Instagram accounts I think you should follow if you are into fitness and you want to be educated more in depth. There is so much bullshit out there. I don't know what it is specifically about fitness that someone feels that because they work out, because they've gotten the results that they want with no other formal education or whatsoever that they can go on Instagram or any social media and start spouting off all these facts of what works and what doesn't and start selling bullshit protein and a whole bunch of array of just verbal puke just coming like just vomiting all this bro science and stuff. I want to be careful of doing that here even though I do have a degree in biochemistry it's something that i gotta dust off every now and then so for me i just want to say for me in this podcast in my youtube reviews in my instagram account what i think that i'm doing is like i'm like a meta analyzer is kind of the word that i'm coming up with for myself and I came up with that because if you think of like in a scientific study, what a, a meta-analysis is, which is a, a grouping of a whole bunch of scientific studies to find some sort of commonality in there. And you get different approaches of different studies, how one university or institution did it, and then another one. And in there, you're trying to, you're trying to group it together to tell a story. And that's kind of what I do with my YouTube reviews. I use my background, um, my biochemistry background when needed, my intellectual property background, because I love patents to find an objective reason of what makes any sort of product different. It's just there's prior art. And I mean, that, that tells you what the invention is. Some people don't understand that, but it's, it's just a really good thing. I can go in there and just read, okay, According to the US, United States Patent and Trademark Office, they have agreed that this certain product is a new novel concept, something never invented before, over anything in the history of all patents or known prior art. Now it's global. You can find it in any which way, uh, some sort of any sort of published medium, which would be like YouTube or anything. Anybody talking about it, if you can find it. So I share that, and then I take that, and then I've tried to find clinical studies to try to back up any of the inventive things like I'm going to be doing with the nerve runner. There's a, there's a few patents that it has on it of what makes it different than any sort of other smart running trainer. And then on top of that, I'm taking some, some I'm researching into the National Institute of Health public database because not all scientific studies are publicly available and free. So I, I'm kind of stuck there. But I try to find any sort of public information that I can share that backs up the claims of the product or anything. I did that with my Normatec massage boots. 
which in the end, it was surprising to me that the research was actually inconclusive. So any sort of placebo effect or any good feelings I get from using the product is just what I said in the video. But it's interesting to use that kind of approach. So I, I take all of these this different data points and then I try to put it into some sort of story, some sort of narrative and present it to you, the viewer, for a different perspective on reviewing products. So going back to the Instagram accounts, there's a lot of subject matter experts in the field of nutrition and physical therapy, just physical movement. Um, I can't even think of the right word right now, um, the right words right now. So I just want to share with you the Instagram accounts I find. Get rid of all the bull crap and just focus on these accounts. They're, there's plenty of others out there, but these are the ones that I absolutely love. And there's some sort of honorable mentions of a, of a couple people. But I, I, I say they're honorable mentions just because their accounts don't specifically on a regular basis have that information. It's more... Oh, I see this certain person's on this podcast I'm going to listen to because I'm a huge fan, highly educational, or they published and they have their own podcast and I want to listen to it, but their specific Instagram account doesn't necessarily have that information freely available. Kind of like mine, I'm trying to work on a different format for my own Instagram to have specific content that is readily available instead of having to go to YouTube or some sort of other medium to see the stuff that I'm talking about or doing. It's just you know, <laughs> there's only so much time in the day for someone that works a full-time job that's getting, um, that's pretty demanding on top of having, you know, social life, staying mentally healthy and doing this YouTube channel, which I absolutely love. And I thank you so much for everyone that watches, listens, supports and reaches out and gives me out the good vibes. Also the bad vibes because it, you know, helps me improve. <laughs> so let's get started. The first one that I'm going to talk about is wad science and it's a couple of exercise biologists that's what i was looking for that was the word i was looking for uh and they just constantly like th what they do is a bunch of uh, like a meta-analysis as well because what they're doing is they're constantly researching reading studies and posting in an easily slide format of what's going on like if, if i open up this one Beta alanine, the intramuscular lactic acid buffer. That one's not really. Oh, here you go. Here's one. How long before my workout should I take caffeine? So they go through and they read the studies. They give you a link to the study, but they put it in a very short kind of PowerPoint format. Some of it's not that easy to read if you're not familiar with exactly what's going on. Um, some sort of the scientific abbreviations, but they do a hell of a job of giving some awesome information. Like one of them I was, I was talking about and you know, there, there's still some room for interpretation here because they had posted one on uh, branch chain amino acids, which I found interesting saying there was no, and I don't want to screw it up. And, but th there was, there was discussions about the, 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 efficacy of branch chain amino acids however when i went to go get my um, micronutrient panel done and i had discussions with my own physician which you should always do when you're talking about supplementation she was very adamant uh that i needed to be supplementing with things like essential amino acids and branch chain amino acids so that's what i do and i think i feel better when i'm taking it i think i'm recovering much better however you know the, the studies there are studies out there that say that they're bullshit, um, but, you know, it is what it is. So, Wad Science, number one, huge fan of uh, these gentlemen. I think they're, like, in Switzerland. Um, definitely, it's Wad, W-O-D underscore science, if you're listening. Up next, we have... One of my friends and a very, very popular, I am blown away. I haven't been able to uh, talk to this guy in a long time, Dr. Aaron Horshig. I actually knew him in college. He's uh, a couple of my best friends went to um, Truman State University in Kirksville, Missouri. There's nothing there, absolutely nothing. But, you know, they went there. Aaron was in their fraternity. 
I've hung out with the guy. I've gone out drink with the guy. And I remember when he started Squat University and it, the, the Instagram account with 1.8 million followers, which absolutely blows my mind because I remember when he had less than 100. Uh, I bought one of his t-shirts just to support him early on years ago. And man, has he blown up. You, you might be listening and have already heard of him. He's in St. Louis now, which he wasn't at the time. Uh, I, I used to hang out with him when he was he was at Mizzou, still going for his PhD. Um, PhD, PT. He's a doctor of physio, physical therapy. Uh, Aaron, I, Aaron, if you ever see this, I, I can't remember. It's Dr. Aaron Horshick, regardless. Um, and he, when he started this, it was just he's like, I'm gonna start po- like or start a social media account focused on perfecting the squat it's like okay like how how far could you go but it's much more than that it's about mobility uh, a lot of focus on olympic lifts highly referenced it very educational he's also got a youtube channel um how how he fixed a stiff elbow he's working with these elite athletes like martin lisi's uh former world's strongest man the triangle of the back squat uh, weightlifter trick he's got He's a published author. Um, knees over toes, okay when you squat, you know. It, and it's just highly educational for anyone that's in that Olympic lifting or powerlifting realm of how to mobilize your body and be more effective in your lifts. If you haven't heard it, you know it's 1.8 million followers, so it's it's t- you know if you're in this kind of arena, um, it's likely that you have. And I got I got to try it. one of the videos I want to do upcoming. Um, I, I got to get a hold of the guy just because I haven't spoken to him in a while. Is the products that he recommends? He he talks about he he references a lot. Like here's one. Um, what are your toes doing? And they're smushed. It your your toes really need to be splayed out when you're doing really heavy lifts. And he recommends some shoes among a bunch of other products. So I want to review and utilize some of the stuff that he recommends. So Squat University, highly, highly recommend. Up next, we're going to go to Found My Fitness, Dr. Rhonda Patrick, PhD in Biomedical Science. Anytime she's on Joe Rogan, I, I got to sit there. I got to listen to it one or two times, three times, whatever, because it's just the amount of knowledge of the stuff we put in our body, the efficacy of what we're doing day to day, whether you know we're fasting, um, doing ketogenic diet, taking vitamin D, is just all in here in these stories. And like she's recently started doing like these talking head pieces, um, vitamin D deficiency, talking about that relation to COVID, gray hair may be reversed in middle aged adults, um, here's ketogenic diet, and she's brilliant. Um, so smart uh i mean age as well she's she's definitely one of those you know don't talk about it be about it kind of people so she takes everything that you know she considers and studies into her own life which you love to see from anybody if they're going to talk about it you know do it uh so it, she's just mushroom consumption associated with 45 percent decrease in cancer risk you know so i'm constantly like looking for anytime she posts uh studies she she actually has you can go to her her website and she makes a lot of her her meta analyses or her her own studies publicly available for anyone to read in a very easily to read format it's not in some sort of boring yeah educate like i guess educational focus format just like there's ways that studies are structured or even like when i was in legal research and writing that just Come on, just you know, make a point, make it easily readable to the average person, and it's going to get your point further much better. So Dr. Rhonda Patrick, all about nutritional advice, uh, highly recommend. Again, next one, more plates, more dates. This guy, Derek, who sits in front of a sauna, and he does something interesting with his content because it to me it appears he, he posts – on YouTube and Instagram, the same videos. So they're long form Instagram TV. I'm interested uh, if in people's opinions of that. When I'm scrolling through Instagram, I don't necessarily uh, want to see 
a 30 minute plus even like even like a five minute plus long video it seems like he's doing all right with it uh but he talks about so he talks about like the pharmacology of a lot of things you know for the most part i think people go with to him for like SARMs, steroid use, HGH, TRT, stuff like that. It's probably more of a male focused audience that he has. However, there's also the general supplementation that he talks about and gives the science behind it and reviews supplements of companies talking about what's BS, what's good. I, Derek, I don't, I don't know his full name, but and I, and I don't know specifically he's he's touched on his background he runs some sort of some sort of lab dealing with pharmacology uh, again I, i'm not 100 percent sure i haven't seen anybody really push back on any of the content that he publishes uh but i highly recommend again him i gotta quit saying highly recommend because you know that's why i'm talking about these these different but he does a lot of these these cool like little videos like um kumail uh kunail or kumail nanjiani when he is prepping for the marvel movies that he's coming up and also you got the star wars role he got absolutely juiced like he is sauced up so derek talks about what he thinks that he's taking he also talks about like the safety of what other people take in terms of injections so it's just very, very interesting, the type of comment, the type of breakdown that he does. He, like, here's one. He, he broke down The Rock's energy drink, Zoa. It, you know, energy drinks, they're not, you know, they're kind of BS. They're not really good for you. So he talks about stuff like that in a very scientific way. More that's So that is more plates, more dates, such ridiculous name i think i heard him talk about that he kind of just made it when he was younger and got stuck with it and he's blown up um youtube channels where i generally see his content but again like i said he does publish it on instagram so check him out up next is bio lane a very somewhat controversial gentleman phd in nutritional science here's what i love about him i love that he is You know, it's something that I try to do or am working towards continually doing is get the bullshit out of stuff that we see on the internet. Like I said at the beginning, there's a lot of people just touting themselves as experts and subject matter experts because they've, you know, they've been there. But just because you've done it doesn't mean you understand it. So what Lane Norton does is target those people with a lot of followers and all these zealots of these certain diets like the ketogenic or intermittent fasting and talks about the science of why what certain people are saying are incorrect now the way he targets these people and the way he corrects them is what's controversial about him i prefer him to find sorry i prefer to follow him on instagram rather than twitter because on twitter he gets in these verbal spouts that just hog up your timeline and you can't really figure out what the beginning argument was, what end goal we're trying to achieve in this argument, which it turns out is more of an argument than a debate, which I like to see. So Instagram is where I like to see like keto diet kills gains, new study, um, low carb diet for glycemic control. He's someone that openly posts his understanding and research So I high, I almost said it. So I love seeing the stuff that he, he, he puts out there. So he's, he's a nutritional science guy. I think he's based out of Tampa. Um, yeah. And it's funny because I believe in person, he's a very personable and nice individual just based on what I saw in his debate with Dom DiAgostino in, um, on Joe Rogan. So I don't know, maybe that's just his style, this attention grabbing way, or he's just generally annoyed and pissed off at the amount of bullshit that's out there on the internet, which I tend to get there too. 
I'm tired. For me, I'm I'm sick of reading something or study and then having to go and validate it because no one's doing their homework and just publishing a bunch of crap. And that also includes very notable, noticeable, uh, notable, uh, liter- what did it say? Like notable institution, like even newspapers and whatnot. Sorry, my I'm getting tongue tied and twisted just because I'm. It's you know I've been moving all day, I've been working all day, all my stuffs here, and I still have a lot to unpack. So we're gonna talk about the last one before we go into the honorable mentions, and this gentleman is my recent favorite, Dr. Andrew Huberman of Stanford University. He is a neuroscience professor. Again, I I saw this guy on Rogan, and he just started posting in his podcast very not even professorial professorial um but a very dumbed down easy to understand way of learning about neuroscience performance and hydration how smell taste and chemicals control you i'm sorry if you're listening i'm just reading posts that he has um, readily available on Instagram. He is at Huberman Lab, which is the name of the lab at Stanford that he's the, the director of. And it's just all this stuff. One, one of the most interesting things that I heard him speak about on his podcast and he posted on his Instagram was this whole almost myth of blue light. So you get these blue light blockers because at night we want to get to bed and we think it's the blue light that's keeping us up when in fact from his discussion it's all light so the study that was done that people constantly reference and make that claim to was only studying blue light and they were using i believe they were using cadaver eyes so the data was only showing some sort of for whatever reason the way they did it it was only showing interactions with the blue light However, it's all types of light that our body is going to interpret as daytime to keep our body awake. I learned that from Dr. Andrew Huberman. Here's this post. Let's click this one. How to build endurance. He talks about the four kinds of endurance, how to build each type, training to enhance brain health. And it just goes on. The amount of time this gentleman puts in to his podcast and his... uh, He's a hell of an artist if he's the one drawing this stuff. His Instagram post is phenomenal. We Social media, to me, for the most part, sucks. It's a huge time suck. There's not a lot of great benefits out there for the general user of it. The things that get the most interaction, like booty pics, um, stupid cat pics, I don't know, just general nonsense that turns your brain to mush. On the flip side of that, there's all of this free education of these all these accounts that I just spoke about that I wish I had when I was much younger and I was studying. I think if, if I did it all again, I would probably would have focused, maybe stuck with in, uh, mechanical engineering. I did mechanical engineering for two years before switching over to biochemistry. So all of my stupid gen eds were like things like statics and dynamics, uh, advanced ma- advanced math. I got ended up getting my math minor, which you don't need as a biochemistry major, which means I took through Calc 3 to differential equations. Then there was physics for engineers that I took, like all this stuff. I, th- I think I probably would have stuck with that just because of the enthusiasm that a lot of these people have for their field. Or there could have been something where I pursued like a PhD or anything else, not now, People do reach out to me about whether or not they should go to law school or not. Uh, that's a tough one to to decide for anybody. But all this free education just makes you super interested. I'm someone who just loves to learn all the time. And again, we talked about Wad Science, Squat University, Found My Fitness, More Plates, More Dates, BioLane, and Andrew Huberman at Huberman Lab. I'll put all those links in the description of this so you can easily click the link and follow them. But it's just a great, like, social media, Instagram, great resource for free education. So I think if you use social media right and eventually down the line, I think a lot of people will. 
it's going to make everyone a hell of a lot smarter. Not to get sidetracked. So I was listening to Neil deGrasse Tyson. I can't remember the gentleman he was interviewing, but he was talking about putting everything in terms of the Gutenberg age. Um, Johann Gutenberg invented the printing press, and it was years and years and years, centuries later, of all these different ways that we formalized and innovated of how to use that. And the internet is, in terms of Gutenberg years, in the infancy of how we use it. So down the road, I, I think it's going to become more of an educational, hopefully, uh, a much more educational tool than it is now for a lot of people. That's my hope of humanity anyway. To wrap this up, I want to talk about a couple of um, honorable mentions. And I say honorable mentions just again because not a lot of the education is readily available on their Instagram, but I love to follow them and see what they're doing. So if they do appear and they do speak, then I can be notified. So first one, Peter Atia, MD. He is a physician. Talks a lot about longevity type of things, and he's an endurance athlete. So he's one of those that continu- continually educates, him- educates himself in the field of performance, which I love because he, 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 someone who does it, sorry, someone who does it has a much better understanding of how to interpret certain studies, results, and in his own way. So Peter at TMD, he's got his own podcast, The Drive, that's super fascinating. He's very kind of like a monotone, not a high energy person from, in, in my opinion, from my list, when I listen to him, but definitely a great follow. And then the last guy, a recent guest on Joe Rogan, and you hear me reference the Joe Rogan experience a lot just because it is, to me, the best resource of learning about all these people that you otherwise wouldn't have, like David Sinclair, Peter Atia, Jocko Willink, David Guy, like a whole bunch of people, and give them a three-hour platform to just discuss what they're working on, what they're focused on. David Sinclair was just on it for, I think, maybe the third time, and he's a longevity expert. He's a Harvard professor, and he just talks about all the different things that he's doing to help us live longer, be younger, longer, all that stuff. I got to listen to him on the Lex Friedman podcast. Um, just a super brilliant guy. Again, his Instagram doesn't readily have the stuff that he's talking, like he's researching available, but I love to know when he's on some sort of other platform so I can go listen to him and learn more about longevity and, you know, just generally what, what he's studying. So, so that's, you know, I didn't even mention that. I'm, I'm wearing, like, if you're watching this, I'm just wearing a white tee just because, I mean, it's what I was wearing when I was moving around, uh, unpacking and helping the movers bring stuff in. But I, th- those are the things I wanted to share. Again, a lot of great things coming up. Next video is going to be on the Nerve uh, Smart Trainer. The video after that is going to be on 8 Sleep, the Smart Bed edition. Uh, I, they reached out to do a review and I said, hell yes, I am obsessed with sleep. Again, this was another product on my short list. I got the cover that recently came out, not just the mattress. I already have a very great mattress that I love. So they have a cover that says it does everything. Again, not getting paid for it. Uh, So this is gonna be my own review. They just like to get the product out there. They like what I'm doing and gonna be discussing the intellectual property on that the science behind what it is that they're trying to achieve. So there'll be one video. And a lot of these videos, pretty much there's going to be two vid- For any of these big, big products, there's going to be two videos. There's going to be one up front talking about the intellectual property, clinical studies, and the general features of a product, followed up with a how did this affect me personally and my own personal opinion. So there's two types of reviews that I'm trying to do. So be patient um, when those are coming out. And there's some other products that are coming down the pipeline too, slowly but surely, trying to get this stuff out there. This, um, I just want to share this. If you're if you're watching and listening, I wonder if I have it readily up. 
just to get a peek behind how the sausage is made here. So, like, here's a uh, um, what I'm showing is a patent for one of the aspects of the nerve uh, runner. And actually, let me show my full display. And over here um, is just me generally just throwing up. And then there's some other notes I don't have pulled up. Uh, just throwing up links and links and links of anything and everything that I can find related to the subject matter. So up front for me, these reviews take a long time because I'll read something. I'll reread something. I will boil it down. This is important. This is not. And it, it, I'm trying to like get more quality with what I'm presenting and trying to take even slower and more time to get the point across. And I, I don't want to miss anything. People have, like point of this podcast was to let my personally, my personality flow out because it is so tough with all of this information that I want to present to the viewer to just do it off the cuff, try to remember it because I'm going to miss something. I did it early on and I had to get myself a teleprompter, which I do. And then I put it in my notes app, goes on my phone. And then I, I, I read, I, I try to keep the tone, the to my tonality in a informal way, but it, it's super tough to do it that way with all the information and I try to condense it because I don't want any lulls or boringness when I when I write or when I edit I try to get all the the crap out all the dead air that doesn't need to be there and we'll we'll get better we'll get better we're we're still again if we talk about Gutenberg Gutenberg years we're a zygote like we're we're just beginning this whole journey and closing in on 5,000 subscribers which I am just so so thankful for and that's going to wrap it up Good stuff. And again, Instagram accounts I will put in the description, um, or you can reference them if you're on Spotify or uh, Apple, um, iTunes, whatever it is. Po um, what what the hell is it? I haven't used them in a while. Um, anyway, the Apple app. Put all this in the description for your reference. And thank you for listening, and I'll see you in the next one.